Mexico. Vince McMahon was served with a search warrant. Earlier this month, U.S. federal law enforcement agents executed both a search warrant and a grand jury subpoena on WWE executive chairman Vince McMahon. That news came courtesy of WWE's quarterly SEC filings Wednesday, where the development was reported. Quote, on July 17, 2023, federal law enforcement agents executed a search warrant and served a federal grand jury subpoena on Mr. McMahon. No charges have been brought in these investigations. The company has received voluntary and compulsory legal demands for documents including from federal law enforcement and regulatory agencies concerning the investigation and related subject matters. Specifics about what the agents were looking for are still unknown. WWE CEO Nick Khan was asked about the development on Wednesday's investors call and declined to answer. Khan confirmed during the call that McMahon is on medical leave after after undergoing spinal surgery. He didn't give any other details, saying that they were respecting Vince's privacy during this time. Vince McMahon also continued to repay WWE back for all the reasonable costs related to the special investigation over the last quarter. Quote, during the three and six months ended June 30, 2023, the company incurred $5.3 million and $7.1 million, respectfully of expenses related to costs incurred in connection with and or arising from the investigation conducted by the special committee of members of the company's board of directors, related revisions to the company's financial statements, and other related matters. Vince McMahon has paid approximately $17.4 million in reimbursements to date. Tony Khan has responded to Paul Triple H Levesque referring to AEW as a secondary promotion. Triple H's comments were made in the recently released American Nightmare Becoming Cody Rhodes documentary. He said Cody was taking a chance by returning to WWE, but wouldn't be able to live out his dreams in a secondary promotion. In the documentary, he said, quote, It's taking that gamble again and saying, I didn't grow up dreaming of being the champion or the face of a secondary promotion. I wanted to be the WWE champion. The AEW president responded to these comments in a recent interview with the Orlando Sentinel. Tony referred to AEW as being the top promotion in the UK in terms of television as well as ticket sales for AEW. AEW All In. Tony Khan said, quote, We certainly won't be the secondary promotion at All In. We're number one in the UK on TV and with a record gate. I have a lot of respect for Cody. I know these weren't his words, to be fair, but we're not secondary in a lot of markets. For the first time in a long time, WWE has been secondary in a lot of markets. I'm proud of where we're at and we're not taking a seat back to anybody. Our own Dave Meltzer reported in last week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that there have been 76,929 tickets distributed to All In at Wembley Stadium. 70,400 of those are paid for a gate of $9 million. The show is 3,780 away from beating WrestleMania 32 as the most attended paid wrestling show of all time, not counting 1995's Collision in Korea event. And in another big story, the Elite are staying in AEW. Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Hangman Adam Page have each signed new multi-year deals with the company. According to a report from Sports Illustrated, in addition to their on-screen work, Kenny Omega and the Bucks will also continue in their roles as executive vice presidents. In regards to re-signing the new deal, Kenny Omega had a lot to say, but here are some of the highlights. He said, I was careful to weigh out all options and was open-minded to all possibilities. Further adding, AEW not only allows me to continue doing what I do at a high level, but allows the freedom to pursue some other passions I have in life, which after nearly 25 years in the ring, have become more and more important to me. Matt Jackson had this to say about re-signing with the company. We're literally the E in AEW. The elites are the main characters of this company. No matter how different AEW is now from its original inception, we are the DNA. And if you lose the foundation of your home, it eventually collapses. It'd be alive, I said, that didn't weigh on us when making the decision. Nick Jackson then added, At this point of my life and career, I just couldn't see myself being on the road half of the year or even more than that. I have so much respect for the guys and girls that are able to do that year after year. We for sure could have made memories in WWE, but what's more important to me is making memories with my family. 
with the position we're in, I'll be able to do that and still make memories in AEW. Additionally, this is what Hangman Adam Page had to say. AEW emerging as a legitimate wrestling company has helped drive up bargaining power for wrestlers and others who work in the industry. Making a long-term commitment to a still growing AEW, I felt was the best way I could help continue that progress. Dave Meltzer addressed the elite status with AEW in last week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, writing that the prevailing belief was that all four members of the group would remain in the company. In a post-match promo after Blood and Guts, Kenny Omega also mentioned that they would all be sticking together. However, WWE is said to have felt they had a shot at landing Kenny Omega at one point. Dave wrote, We do know from a WWE standpoint that months ago, they had the impression that they had a good shot at Omega in 2024. And he was the most coveted of all the guys being talked about, like Jay White and the others. That has gone cold, so they do believe he's staying with AEW. Meltzer continued to say that Tony Khan's recent contract offers to talent indicate the AEW president is confident in a future television's rights fee increase. Saying, Tony Khan making these big offers indicates hope or thoughts of a huge rate increase, in which case big money deals make economic sense. But as we note weekly, television is in a weird state right now and it's the least stable it has ever been. And for TV to commit to something new, years in the future will be interesting. WWE says WrestleMania 39 generated 215 million for the Los Angeles region. The company revealed the findings of a study conducted by Applied Analysis on Wednesday, noting that WrestleMania 39 broke the record set last year of 206.5 million in economic impact for the Dallas region. 161,892 fans attended the two-night show, which the company is calling the highest grossing and most attended event in WWE history. The company says WrestleMania has generated more than $1.2 in cumulative impact for cities hosting the event since 2016. WWE has been consistently promoting its record-breaking events in recent months. In July, the company touted Money in the Bank 2023 from the O2 Arena as the highest grossing arena show in company history. WWE also announced earlier this year that WWE Backlash from Puerto Rico in May was the highest grossing backlash event in company history. Additionally, WWE says February's Elimination Chamber in Montreal also broke the all-time gate and viewership record for Elimination Chamber events. That is it for today's news. Thank you guys so much for checking out the latest and we'll catch you on the next episode. For those of you who missed our previous episode, you can watch by clicking on the screen. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to F4W Online here on YouTube.